Let's go ahead and uh, go back on the record. It's 1130. This is the city of West Palm Beach code enforcement special magistrate uh, fine reduction hearing schedule. Um, so we have a few folks present for these hearings. Um, when your case is called, you can come up to the podium to my right. Um, the city will give me some background information on the case, and then I will um, come back over to you and you can present the request for the lien reduction or the fine reduction, and um, we'll go from there. So uh, what's the first case that we're doing? Let me recall, because I wasn't on the record. Agenda items number one and two, case number CE19010246, and case number CE07060371, same address, 675 New York Street. Special Magistrate, can you swear me in? And so are you an attorney representing the applicant, or are you the applicant? Yeah, I'm the applicant. My name is Rory Rowan. I'm the trustee. All right, so let me property. go ahead, and uh, I'm going to need to place you under oath. Your testimony will need to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm under me penalties too. of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes. Thank you very much. Were you not here this morning, Ms. St. Hilaire? Okay, same to you. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the yes. truth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so go ahead um, with these first two cases. Um, case CE190-10246 was cited January 14, 2019. The property was given a year of courtesy to comply with a crime proper permits and passing all necessary inspections. The property failed to do so. After over a year, um, the property was taken to hearing on September 16, 2020, where they were given 90, an additional 90 days or $100 a day to comply with the magistrate's order. The property was out of compliance for 231 days, resulting in a lien amount of $23,100. Magistrate, this is the same owner, so the city is asking for 25%. Um, case CE 07060371 was cited on June 11, 2007. On August 3, 2007, the magistrate ordered 30 days or $50 a day to comply. The property was out of compliance for 5,138 days, resulting in a lien of $256,900. This is also the same owner. Um, the city is also requesting 25%. Um, I just want to put on record that for this case, the owner did not notify the code officer and were given plenty of extensions in the previous case by the building department to get this property into compliance, which they did not. It took almost two years before uh, CE19010246 was even taken to hearing, given the property owner plenty of time to put in the proper permits and passing all necessary inspections. Sir, go ahead and put your name on and uh, your position or your affiliation with the property yeah, on the yeah, record Yeah, my name again. is Rory Rowan, and I'm the trustee. Uh, thank the you, owner, Mr. Legal Rowan. owner of the property. Um, okay, you can proceed. Yes, thank you. Um, we replaced an unsafe rotted and a damaged door and one broken window in uh, November of 2019. Both were to safety hazards as the door would not close and the window was cracked. In December of 2019 or January of 2020, I spoke with Mr. Crespo, the code officer, and he thought that we had added a new fence, inferring that the fence had been uh, replaced without permit, uh, when in fact we had just changed the pickets on the fence. He also noted the door and the window repair without a permit. In January of 2020, I spoke with Doug, a city of West Palm Beach planner, who described the requirements for window replacement, the necessary engineering reports. We had a long discussion about uh, the engineering letters and, and the requirements, and I left with the impression that a permit was not required because Florida Building Code 105.2 exempts work under $1,000. The window costs $300, the door costs $159. So for a total of $459. So I was left with the impression that we did not need a permit. Nothing happened for eight months. Eight months pass and a violation is issued on August, approximately August 24th, 2020, which is the height of the COVID lockdown. 
Mr. Crespo said that we needed a permit for the door and the window. We had a hearing on, no, uh, or a hearing was scheduled on September 16, 2020. The hearing did not occur because the code officer was delayed or otherwise unavailable due to traffic. So I met with Mr. Petty, Phil Petty, and he convinced me that it would be better for all to just agree to get the permit. He says it's going to be a lot easier if you just agree to get the permit. So I agree to get the permit by December 15, 2020. We make an immediate application for the permit. Nothing occurs until 2000, until December 16, 2020, when a resubmit task is issued on project docs. So nothing occurs in the city uh, as far as issuing the permit from the time I applied in September till December 15th, which is my due date. Um, on 1-14-21, I resubmit product approval. On 1-26, I call for an update. I speak with Aaron. Uh, he tells me that historic failed, building failed. He says uh, he needs photos and product approvals again, so, and he will look at it today. On 2 21 I call Roger McPherson, and I say, I can't understand what's taking so long. No further tasks are in project docs. Why can't I get a permit? On 2 21 we upload the pictures. 3 9 we log in again and resubmit for a third time. We resubmitted our documents again for the third time. On, May, on March 23rd, the permit is issued. Okay, so that's what happens. The permit gets issued. Personally, I had some medical issues. We had COVID. I didn't have COVID, but we had COVID going on. I had a personal uh, a medical issue, and I also contracted shingles in June. So I was pretty much laid up from March till August. We did receive our final inspection of the work that had already been done on uh, August 4th, 2021. The permit itself allows for six months to get an inspection, as you probably know. So I'm being fined for something where I'm allowed to, I, I got the permit and I'm still being fined until the final inspection. Now I think the agreement did say permit issued and final inspection, so I'm not going to say that it didn't, but the permit does allow for some time and I was ill. Um, we paid a penalty of four times the permit fee because we, we didn't pull the permit first. Uh, we received the satisfactory inspections, everybody seemed to be happy, and the matter was closed. I think the city does bear some responsibility for the delay in issuing the permit, and the fact that we have already paid a penalty fee for the permit, I think uh, might be enough, but if the city wants to agree to a nominal fine, I mean, or impose a nominal fine, maybe that's proper. Um, what was the amount of the four times the permit fee, do you recall? I'm not sure what that is. The permit wasn't very much, though, because it was, it was only $500 worth of, of materials. Right and we did the work ourselves. So I don't know that it was a, a lot of money, to be honest with you, but, but that's what they charge. They charge four times the fee, and that's what I paid. Okay. Um, what about the 2007 case? What can you tell that's me? That's a little bit different. <laughs> uh, on that case, we've been property owners in the city for 25 years. And to my knowledge, we've not had chronic nuisance issues, and we've never ignored a code violation, notwithstanding uh, what, what may be your decision on the, on the case that we just discussed. But the subject lien was issued in 2007, and it remained undiscovered by me. Now I'm a trustee for a property. I'm supposed to pay attention to these things. If I knew, what was, if I knew there was a, a fine or a lien against the property, I would have acted. I mean, that's, that's maybe supposition, but basically that's, a, a, I think, a, a legitimate thing to say. Um, we did a title search on another property, and we came up and found the lien. Um, I checked, the, I, I asked the city for their, their records, of course, and uh, I see that the, the certificate, uh, the certified mail notice was signed, not by me, but by another family member of mine. I never got it. If I would have gotten it, I would have acted on it. I'm not trying to avoid the blame, but my recollection is that I didn't see any notice, and I didn't attend any hearings, and I have no recollection of any findings of fact. Now, this basically was a violation for inspection failed due to alley easements, right of way, mow grass weeds, weather tight external doors. This specific violation, I'm not so sure, I'm not saying that the, the code enforcement officer was incorrect or not, but we were cited for landscape violation in the rear of the property. We received the permit permit number 04061240 for brick pavers in that walkway. So the whole back of the property, the whole easement in the back of the property is, has pavers on it. So I don't know how we could not have mowed the lawn, but I'm not sure if maybe he was referring to something else. Uh, I know sometimes they use, they use shorthand in these things, but, but as it reads, uh, the easement 
there, there's no problem there because it's, it's got, it's got uh, pavers in it. But anyway, we also, we have a lawn service. We've owned the property for 18 years. We have a lawn service that comes every two years. I mean, every two weeks. Maybe he missed a week. I'm not saying that the code, the, the officer didn't see something amiss because obviously he did. But, but we have a, a service that, that comes every two weeks. And likely this violation was corrected within two weeks because there was no further action by the city. Now, I understand maybe I'm supposed to act, I'm supposed to call the code inspect inspection officer and tell him I've corrected the violation. But if I don't know about the violation, I can't make that phone call. So I, I, I never made the phone call, I never called him or I never notified him that the violation was corrected. But it's my guess that it was corrected because for the next 14 years, we never had, that, we never had any problem with that property. So, uh, and as I said, we have a service that comes every two weeks. Uh, I say this is kind of a minor violation, mowing the lawn. I understand all violations are noteworthy. I understand that, but I think this one is on, on the lower end of the scale. Um, additionally, the city has the authority to foreclose a lien or sue for a judgment after three months. City didn't do that. I'm not saying the city should have. <laughs> I prefer that they didn't, but uh, you can't sit on your rights and say we owe $250,000 if you don't make any effort to collect that. Uh, and the statute allows the city to, to file after three months. Additionally, I'd say that the code enforcement, generally our take on code enforcement is that it's directed towards rehabilitation and compliance. I know that there is a punitive aspect of it, um, but generally speaking, I think it's fair to assume that this violation was corrected early on and it just remained undiscovered for an extended period of time. Now, if you look at the current status of the property, uh, you, she's showing pictures, I mean, there, there are pictures up there. I mean, we've got a new roof on it, we've got landscaping, it's painted, the property looks fine, there's no problems with the property. My tenants are all long-term tenants, there's families in there, they've been there 10 years, nine years, and 10 years. I don't think we've had any police actions there, we don't have any problems with this property. And uh, I'd ask that the fine be reduced to, I, I made an offer of $2,000, but I don't want to be presumptuous. Um, to see what you decide, but I think that's reasonable. All right. Thank you, sir. I'll Thank come you. Come back and uh, see what the city, Hi, what's uh, the city at this point? Yeah, so um, as you mentioned for the 2007 case, he's just reading off the description, which is what we just add in there in case anybody just wanna get just a quick overview of what the case is. But um, the, like you said, you were cited for landscape maintenance. Part of landscape maintenance is a lot of the homeowners seem to forget. You do have to trim your alleyways if your tree's overhanging onto the neighbor's property that is considered right of way. And a lot of the time, your landscapers don't do that. So that, you know, you might be cutting the front or even the side of the property, but they do forget the rear of it. So I just want to make that a quick note, just because that's what it says in the description does not mean that was the, you know, yeah, that's what it was. Also, even with the comment uh, for the 2019 case with building, um, we understand that COVID affected a lot of people, which is why um, in my opening statement, I stated that there was almost a two years extension given to this property to uh, even acquire the permits, even if it, were, um, if it didn't pass. When it went to hearing, that was the final judgment, just stating that this already should be wrapped up and you were given an additional 90 days to get all of this done. Um, the city, even with the project docs um, changing things over, the city did their part in making sure that you had the ability to put in the proper plans if needed. Inspections were were still being carried out. All you had to do was request it. That the city did that with every other property, um, every other property. So I don't see why they would just you know not go to yours. And yeah, it's been plenty of chances given here to try and correct the violations. Even with the 2007 case, it took uh, us. Um, it took for you filing a lien reduction for it to finally get closed out. That wasn't even um, when you called. Uh, you never called us to tell us that the property was in compliance. It wasn't until our inspectors went out there for a lien reduction that we went and closed it out. This was not something you requested. This was not something that was ever communicated to the city. So, you know, once a magistrate gives their order, the code officer goes out there, take their final picture. At that point, it is a trustee, property manager, property owner to let us know that the property is in compliance. Past that point. Uh, um, as Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, are you 
I'm, yeah. Finished? Yeah. All right, I'll let you have the final say. Right, your final say. I'm not saying it's the city's fault in any straight way, stretch of, my, of the imagination. As far as uh, keeping in touch and whether I notified the city, as far as the first one with the, without a permit, I was in constant contact with Mr. Crespo, and he filed an affidavit as soon as I... Uh, as soon as we got the inspection, I called him the next day and told him we got the inspection. He filled out an affidavit and uh, said we were in compliance. So it's not, not, it's not like I ignored that one. I knew about that one and we moved as quickly as we could. I think there is some responsibility for not issuing the permit by December 15th. We agreed to that, but we have no control over how it gets issued. So uh, the permit was issued. I think this is basically, in, in that case, it's basically no harm, no foul. Uh, the second case, you know, was a little bit longer, a little, little bit longer time, so I understand that. But. Yeah, the per I just want to make a quick note. The permit wasn't issued until August 4th of oh, this year. I didn't hear issued. what you said. Say that again. Permit so was sorry, issued. I didn't hear you. Say what you just said again. I oh, I said, okay, the permit wasn't issued until August 4th of this year. Permit was issued 323-21. Final inspection was August 4th. Yeah, the final inspection, that's when it would... Complete, that's them signing off that it's complete. It wasn't until August 4th. I understand. Yeah. That's the inspection part of the permit. Okay. okay. Um, anything else from the city? No. Anything else, sir? No, thank you. All right. Um, based on the testimony I've received, there's what everyone did during you know, COVID certainly came into effect. Um, I, I don't have the sense based on the testimony that I've heard that there was um, a deliberate um, ign ignoring of the problem from the applicant. I, I, I sense that there was things took longer than maybe they should have, but I sense there was a good faith effort. Um, you know, on the, on the 2007 one, something may have slipped through, but you know, the, those violations were not uh, a quarter of a million dollars worth of violation um, on a bad day. So <laughs> here's what I'm gonna do, and, and based on everything I've heard, the testimony, the evidence, the circumstances, um, I'm gonna, in the case ending in 246, that's the 2019 case, uh, I will reduce that one to $2,000. In the case ending in 0371, that's the 2007 case. I'll reduce that one to $5,000. Can you pay those within 30 days, sir? Yes. Payable within 30 days. And um, uh, uh, I don't know how quickly, I, I assume you have to issue an order first. I can't go next door and pay now. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. And we aim to pay one, one stop shop. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, thank you very much yes, for your sir. time, sir. I can take this next door. May I just ask, I think there's a release of lien situation. How's that gonna work? Uh, with the right away. Okay, there'll be no time lag. To check with them. Okay, okay, thank you very much. All right, where to? Agenda items number six and seven. Six and seven. Case number CE1911-0284 and CE2010-0111, same address, 2708 Broadway. Good morning, sir. Have I sworn you in yet? I know. Uh, let me go ahead and um, please show under oath. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. And then we'll, uh, same process, I'm going to hear from Ms. St. Hilaire first. She'll give me some background information on the request, and then I'll come back to you, and you can tell me about your uh, request. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Six and seven. Okay. KCE 1901284 was cited November 21st, 2019. The property was ordered 15 days or $100 per day. The property was out of compliance for 150 days, which resulted in a $15,000 lien. Um, this is the previous owner, but was the cause of the violation. The city is seeking 25%. Um, KCE 2010011 was cited on October 8th, 2020. 
On January 6, 2021, the property was ordered 30 days or $250 per day. Um, property was out of compliance for 124 days, which resulted in a $31,000 lien. Um, again, pretty similar violation from the last one, trash and debris. So the city is also seeking 25% um, of that one, being that this was the previous owner that caused the violation. All right, yes, sir, go ahead and tell me your name and um, address and um, your affiliation with the property, and then we can proceed. Yeah, Lee Heaton, 2141 Ascot Road, Juno Beach, um, Dave, property owner. Are you the manager of uh, New Hampshire? Yes, yeah. Well, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so the 2019 um, code issue, I was not made aware of. Um, went to a separate mailing address. And there was a property manager on site that was, I guess, dealing with Joe Petrick. Um, when I was made aware of it, it was some time later and uh, resolved all the issues quickly and met Joe out at the property. Um, subsequently, there was another um, issue, which a lot of the same items, like she mentioned, <clears throat> uh, they were handled uh, quite quickly. And I think Joe would attest to that. The, uh, the item that took the longest was the driveway. I'm sorry, was what? The driveway, there was some okay. potholes and he, he asked that the driveway be repaired. Um, the, there was a contractor uh, called, uh, contractor went to this, the city to find out what was needed. He couldn't pull the permit, he needed a general contractor to pull the permit. Uh, also needed a survey and a site and a plan uh, submitted to enable to, to be able to pull the permit. Um, so we had to order the survey get a plan um, and then find a general contractor who would want to do this little job in um, in this market. Um, it was very tough and I, I found a uh, friendly contractor uh, that, that did pull the permit, end up pulling the permit, um, and it took some time to get the permit from the city. I think it took two, three months, I'm not sure. Uh, you might have that timeline, I don't have that. I was just made aware of this last night, by the way, so I, so I don't have my detailed timeline here, but um, I just got on the schedule last night, so um, that's my story. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else from the city on this case? No. All right. Any final comments, sir? Your, everything? No, I don't have Okay. Any. All right. All right, um, so I've heard the testimony from the city as well as um, the applicant. And um, what I'll do in these cases, we have the 2019 case, which ends in 0284. That lien is $15,000. I'm going to reduce that to $1,000 payable within 30 days. Can you pay that within 30 days? Yes, sir. And then uh, the case ending in... 2020 case ending in 0111. That lien is $31,000. I'm going to reduce that one to $3,000, also payable within 30 days. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Agenda item number four, five, eight, and nine are the same owner, but they're different addresses. How would you like me to call them?
Same owner, different addresses. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and do them all together. Okay. Um, but let me, let me, I'll have um, Miss St. Hilaire give me the Just background on each case individually. Um, Just a second. Uh, are you representing the owner on all four cases? Yes, magistrate. Okay. And then, so then I'll come back over um, to Mr. Brandenburg and, and we'll hear about each case and then I'll make a, I'll enter an order on each one, but let's go ahead and do them all together. Okay, let me just call them for the record. Yes. Okay, agenda item number four, case number CE20010552, case address 2935 North Australian Avenue. Agenda item number five, case number CE19070496, case address 4393 Windsor Avenue. Agenda item number eight, case number CE19090194, and agenda item number nine, case number CE20110081, same address 400 Metcalf Court. Okay. All right. Case CE20010552 was cited on January 29th, 2020. The property was taken to hearing on March 4th of 2020 and was ordered 30 days or $150 a day to comply. Property was out of compliance for 388 days, resulting in a lien amount of $58,200. This is a new owner. Um, due to that reasoning, um, Special Magistrate, the city is, asked, is seeking 15% for in a second. For case CE01907496, Property was cited on July 29, 2019. The property was taken to hearing on September 4th, 2019. The property was given 60 days or $150 a day to comply. Okay, let me stop you. Which, which should Oh, change? number five. This is number five. That's okay, what I I'll thought. Yeah, I'll okay. say the number and then the case number to make it a little easier. Yeah, so case number five, CE10190704960 was cited on July 29, 2019. Product, property was taken to hearing on September 4th, 2019. The property was given 60 days, $150 per day to achieve compliance. Property was out of compliance for 526 days and resulted in a lien amount of $78,900. Um, same as the last one, new owner city is seeking 15%. Okay, case number eight. Right? Case number eight, CE. 1909194 was cited September 13, 2019. It was taken to hearing on October 16, 2019. The property was ordered 30 days, $100 a day until compliance is achieved. The property was out of compliance for 550 days, which resulted in a lien amount of $55,000. Again, this is a new owner, so the city is seeking 15%. Case number nine, CE. 2011081 was cited November 5th, 2020. It was taken to hearing December 2nd of 2020. The property was ordered 30 days or $150 a day until compliance is achieved. The property was out of compliance for 137 days, which resulted in a lien amount of $20,550. Also new owner, um, city is seeking 15%. Because of that, let me give you. Mm -hmm. um, special Magistrate, I just want to, um, although this is the new owner, I do want to point out that these violations did last for a long period of time. Um, so please consider the uh, verity of the violations and how long it did take to even get into compliance and that although this is a new owner, they did purchase the property knowing that these violations and um, and liens exist on the property. Thank you. Um, agenda item five lists a, a different address than the two property appraiser. Oh, yeah, they're the same ad, same owner for all of them. 2935 Australian Ave, 4393 Windsor Ave, and 400 Metcalf. The agenda that I'm looking at lists the case ending in the 2019 case ending in 496 with an address of 4393 Windsor Avenue. Yes. I didn't I don't have a property appraiser oh, printed for that. 
That's all. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Brandenburg, go ahead, sir. Good morning, Magistrate Dylan Brandenburg, Brandenburg & Associates, on behalf of Sunview Medical LLC. Uh, as Officer St. Hilaire already uh, laid out, we are here today uh, on a reduction for uh, four code issues on three separate properties. Uh, the history on this is somewhat interesting. Uh, these uh, properties were purchased in uh, September of 2020 um, in a transaction involving six different properties that were all a part of the uh, Jerome Golden Medical Center, which shortly before that time period went through financial difficulties uh, and ended up closing down. Uh, this is the purchase of these properties were done uh, as a result of that uh, by Sunview, which is a medical provider uh, which provides mental health services for you know, disadvantaged individuals and they're looking to do the same thing, bring those services into the city of West Palm Beach. Uh, again, as Officer St. Hilaire mentioned, uh, every single one of these code violations were entered in on the previous owner before Sunview ever came in. And uh, they, so they sort of find themselves in a situation of uh, playing catch up and inheriting these properties which were not in the best condition and have now been working incredibly hard over the last year or so uh, to get these properties uh, up into compliance. I think that I probably drove uh, Officer St. Hilaire and Miss Williams absolutely crazy during this last six months pro uh, process. They can probably attest to that. Uh, but I also just want to take a minute and really thank uh, Officer St. Hilaire and Miss Williams for really going above and beyond taking the phone calls and uh, working with the property owner to get these uh, into compliance. Now uh, we're in front of you today asking you to enter a reduction order on these four code uh, cases. Uh, we asked for 10% in our application, uh, although we really think that the amounts should be wiped out completely, seeing as this is a uh, a provider who's going to come into the city and is going to be offering services to the city that really the city desperately needs after the closure of the original Jerome Golden Center. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Brandenburg. Uh, Ms. St. Hilaire, do you have anything additional to add? No, he's a, that's okay. it. Um, anything else? Okay, give me just a second here. You got half of my agenda, so let me. Uh... Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I've heard everything that's been presented. I have looked at each of the four cases, and here, here's what uh, I think is appropriate in each case. So I'll just go through the agenda. Agenda item number four is case uh, the, tw the 2020 case that ends in 0552. Current lien is $58,200. I'm going to reduce that one to $5,000. Um, case uh, 
2019 case ending in 0496. The current lien is $78,900. I'm likewise going to reduce that one to $5,000. Um, agenda item number eight, that's the 2019 case ending in 0194. Current lien is uh, $55,000. I'm going to reduce that one to $3,000. And then the last case, agenda item number nine, which is the 2020 case ending in 0081. I'm going to reduce that, that's a lien of $20,500. I'll reduce that to $2,000. I think that's all totaled $15,000. Can you pay that within 30 days? Yes, sir. 30 days, and I'll sign that order. Okay. Thank you, Magistrate, and thank, thank you, you again much. to staff. What do we have left? One more. One more, number three. Let's do it. As long as Wayne Richards doesn't show up, we'll be in good shape. Oh, Wayne, hi. Nice to see you. You're looking good, by the way. How are you? That's good. Agenda item number three, case number CE1707041, case address 701 South Olive Avenue, unit 1007. All right, and then your counsel for? For the owners. For the owners. Uh, so let me hear uh, from Wayne Ms. St. Hilaire, then I'll come back uh, to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, case um, item number three. CE 1707401 was cited July 24, 2017. The property was taken to hearing on September 6, 2017. The magistrate gave the property owner 30 days or $100 per day to comply with the rental license and COU violation. Um, property was out of compliance for 1,447 days, resulting in a lien amount of $144,700. This is the same owner. Um, the city is asking for 25%. Um, we have uh, code officer Kevin Levine um, inspected this property a few times and he verified with the front desk that and the property owner also told us that this property was being rented out at least for a whole year uh, prior to them giving us a non-rental affidavit and, try and complying with the case, which is why it took so long. Um, here's... Okay. Mr. Richards. Good morning. Wayne Richards on behalf of the owners. Uh, so th that was actually new to me, and I'd like to see what the city has. My understanding, Special Master, is that the place was rented. We admit that. But our understanding is that it was rented for a very short time period, and the Condominium Association is the group that actually said, you can't do this, we don't allow it, number one, and number two, you need a rental license if we did allow it. Uh, so I'm of the, I have been told that it was rented for literally two months, so I would like to see whatever the city might have, uh, because um. we do believe it was rented for a very short time period, but they were shut down. The condo association shut her down. They did not allow that. And that's what actually got her into compliance. So can you share with, would cities share what they have that shows that it was rented for 12 months? Code officer, Kevin Levine, he is our BTR officer, and he's the one that does all these inspections. And he himself put the exact date would be in the case file. I could try to pull it up where he noted that, if you give me a second, I could tell you, notated on October 25th, 2021, he made a note that he spoke with the front desk and they verified that this unit was at least rented from July 22nd, 2017 to July 23rd, 2018. That's from um, what we have on record. So Mr. Special Master, we, we, I'm putting myself in your shoe. It's so four years after the event, 
an officer who's not here was told allegedly by somebody who's not here that it was rented four years ago. That's tough. I, I'm not questioning you. I would never do that. Uh, I would not do that. I really would not. So either we have to question. People question me all the time. Well, <laughs> question, feel feel oh, free. Let me wait till it's over. Then I'll <laughs> question you. So it's a little tough. My client has assured me that it lasted about two months. She was clueless. She told me she was clueless. And she was shut down by the condo board and the city. But now I'm hearing that four years after the alleged infraction, an officer who's not here was told by another person who's not here that it was rented four years ago. Was that person working then? And who was that person? The well, good news is it's, it hasn't been rented in the last four years. We know that. I will admit this client is difficult to get a hold of. She lives, her primary residence is a farm in Virginia. Uh, she assured me once she was shut down, she didn't do it again. So we're admitting that we were at fault. We're, the disagreement is the amount of time. She told me after two months she was shut down. And that's how she found out she needed a license and it really wasn't allowed by the association. So we're asking for a minimal fine of $500. Four years ago, short time period, hasn't done it again, won't do it again. Let me ask the city, Ms. St. Hilaire, what was, and you, you, you stated it in your presentation, but I'm not recalling, the, how, what was the amount of the daily fine that was it, uh, put in the order finding violation? $100 per day. But I also did want to state, um, I kind of want to break down the process with you. For code officers, when it comes to cases of rental license and COUs, there are a number of items that we do check to make sure that the property is being rented along with um, the water bill, tenants being in, um, on the premises. We also, if there is a condominium or if there's a HOA, there's a front desk, we speak with them to verify um, if the property is actually being rented out. Now, if an employee is not there no longer, that does not fall on the city. You know, we just go in to verify that, do you, you know, with your records, do you know that somebody's being rented in there, and which they told us. But again, even if your client was renting it out for these couple of months, there was already a notice of violation issued. Um, if at that time, an affidavit of non-rental should have been filled out, and given back to the city or, oh, I'm sorry, oh, you know, uh, affidavit of non-rental should have been given back to the city to notify us that this is no longer being rented out and that would have been entered in our record. We Nowhere in here did your client reach out to Code Officer Levine and say, hey, this property is no longer being rented and these fines would not have accrued. As the magistrate always orders um, on these cases, get with your code officer, please contact the code officer and let them know. So even at the time of the hearing, maybe they did have a, someone in there and they were trying to get them out. The moment that the individual left, it is up to the property owner, property manager to let the code officers know we cannot go on the property without notice. We cannot, part of getting a rental license is to get inspections. If we can't do the inspections, we cannot pass a rental license, nor can we close it out. That is the responsibility of the owner. Oh. Thank you. I fully agree. I've, I've, actually, I've actually given that speech about a thousand times and probably 50 times in the last two years. I fully agree. The issue is this owner did not have any interaction. And I, I, I believe your files show that the, this owner says she had no interaction. She was clueless. And I believe it's the condominium association that shut her down. So she found out years later that there was a problem. It's not as though she knew there was a violation, found out there was a violation, and disobeyed it. She was clueless. It is her responsibility to know the law, to follow the law, to get a license, and when she knows she's out of compliance, seek an affidavit, fully agree, love those principles. This particular person did not know, falling on the sword, I believe it was for two months. I really do. Th that's what she tells me. I wasn't there. Special Magistrate, may I ask a question? Yes. Mr. Richards, do you do you have anything from your client? Um, you keep saying that the condo association shut her down. Did they give her correspondence, uh, an email? Do you happen to have anything? I don't, but she told she tells me that they shut her down. 
Okay. They, they did not approve it. Microphone. Thank you. She tells me that they shut her down. They did not approve it, and they, they shut her down. Yeah, they're very strict over there, which is good. And right now, it's, there's no rental activity going on. Absolutely not. And actually, I have an application in just to have it. So there is an application being oh, processed for the rental now. license. But no, it, it's not occupied by a tenant. Has not been occupied by a tenant for four years. Okay. Yeah. Well, so right. said that. she, I think she found out when she tried to refinance. She eventually got to another lawyer who got to me. It took quite a while. And then we lost two years for COVID, but. Admittedly, there's been no activity there for four years. Sure. The issue, I think, is two months versus 12 months. Anything else from the city? Yeah, I mean, I just want to put on record that we did do our due diligence, made sure that we didn't send out the notice of violation to the address that we have on the property appraisers. The property and city hall were posted. We spoke with uh, front desk to verify. We check our records, you know, so. Ultimately, I think the city's right in seeking well, 25 no, yeah. And I'm not retrying the case. Yeah. I'm not yeah. questioning proper notice. I'm not questioning that there was a violation. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going there. I'm, it's a question of what the appropriate if, if I may. amount is on this. So, uh, Mr. Richards, I'll give you the final uh, thing. Just briefly, it's an issue of harm. And it, it, was she wrong? Yes. Um, I do believe the harm is de minimis. Uh, has not been repeated, will not re re be repeated. So the question is, how much do we want to take out of this person? Hopefully not a lot. Okay, so thank you both. So when I'm looking at, you know, these kind of things, there, there's two, there's two time frames. There's the technical, legal, you know, it was found in violation on this date and did not actually be, was not legally brought into compliance until either the city reinspected on its own or because someone finally got around to telling the city. And that's how you end up with a $144,000 number on a, on a uh, rental license violation. And then there's also the time frame of what actually happened. How, how, when was the violation actually occurring, even if it wasn't cleared out until some date far in the future um, and this is a case that um, you know, I haven't heard any evidence about uh, any impact to neighboring properties or negative impact to to other residents um, so if I look at the this one year period from July of 2017 to July of 2018 um, and if that's you know, it seems like worst case scenario that that's the evidence of actual violation that occurred. And, Special know, magistrate to clarify so, your your theory, just to clear, just to clarify your theory, the date ordered did not start until October 11th, 2017. So that's later than the July 2017 you're currently talking about. I understand. About. I'm just I'm, oh, I'm okay. going I, through my thought process on. Very good. on how I'm landing where I'm going to land and why I'm landing there. Um, you know, I, I, there's no evidence that it was in violation for $144,700 worth of days. Um, so, all that to say, I, 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 and I think Mr. Richards said it's sort of, but you know, is it a year or is it two months? So, for purposes of this lien reduction hearing, I'm, I'm going to, in my head, I'm going to say it was rented out for a year based on what I've been provided. Um, so boiling all that down in my head, in this case, you have a $144,700 lien. Uh, based on everything I've heard and the evidence that I have seen, I'm going to reduce that to $3,000 and ask that to be paid within 30 days. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you, city staff. And I think that concludes our business this morning. Is that correct? All right, then it is uh, 11, uh, 12 19, and we stand adjourned. <laughs>